to the shop. Um, as you can tell by the title of this video, we're going to be taking a look at a uh, Cogsdale Burrowway tool. We'll probably take a peek at that adjustable center, Enco center that I got play around with that. Not much going on in the fact of projects this week. Um, as you can tell probably by Keith Fenner's video, we've been socked in by snow Monday and Tuesday. Um, and we got about three feet up here. And um, we got a little bit more Friday, and actually right now it's snowing like crazy. We got about six or eight inches on the ground. We're expecting uh, 14 to 16, so fun times. Um, for those of you that follow me on Facebook, I kind of all I've been doing a little bit of shop organization here, and um, I've been organizing my taps and everything into that little uh, IKEA. Um, drawers that I, I had picked up. So I'll just I'll just show you the dividers real quick after this and everything that I made. A um, few more shop updates. I did get uh, th that project I was talking about with the exotic material. I did get the material in which is titanium. Um, this is uh, <clears throat> CP2 grade titanium. It's the softer version. Uh, the reason why it is the softer version is this bar is gonna end up um, as my and my girlfriend's wedding rings. Um, so I wanted a softer material in case I ever had to cut the ring off. It can be done with a standard ring cutter. Um, as even when I was an EMT, I've had to do that before and some of the rings can be really tough to get off. Uh, so at least I know that a, a cutter should be able to get through this. We don't necessarily get through the higher grades. Plus it's a little bit more machinable. But, um, so this will definitely fit her finger. This is a one inch piece. Uh, my finger, I kind of just eyeballed it and it, it should get away with it with these sausage fingers. Um, hers is just going to be a straight band. Well, I get a nice radius tool, grind a radius in it and um, you know dress it up that way. Mine is going to be a little bit wider and it's going to have an insert of a different metal in there. So more than likely it's going to have to be a dovetailed slot. So I have to figure out how deep I can go with that, how much material I have left. But I got to get my, my finger measured from a jeweler first. Because um, I, I don't wear rings, so the uh, the only ring that I do have is uh, a a um, high school class ring, which doesn't fit anymore. So I need a an accurate measurement of what my finger is, and we'll see if we can make it out of this, which we should be able to. Um, also, we got a viewer appreciation gift in, um, and this comes to us from uh, Dave. You know him better as uh, Swarfrad on the comments. And uh, he sent me a knob, and this is the screw, uh, the locking screw for the camera mount that I made. So uh, I've been using, this was just a 3 8 bolt, I've been using a, um, a wrench to do it. So he sent me a knob, I was able to just cut off the end of the bolt and Loctite this on there, and it works perfectly. So now I can do it by hand, instead of having a wrench. Um, so let's just take a quick peek at the little uh, tray organizer that I made. And then we'll come over here on the bench and take a peek at um, the, deburr the deburring tool that we're going to be using. So this is the IKEA um, cabinet that I bought. Like I said, they're running about 30 bucks or so. And uh, they're all metal and you kind of saw a little idea of what it looked like when I'm in there. It can hold a decent amount of weight. Um, the only thing is, is the, uh, the drawers themselves are what hold on and hook everything together so you don't want to put a whole bunch on there but what I did is um, went on the table saw and just made some dividers for it and just separated all my taps into, into sizes so this one here is the coarse taps we got fine taps we got coarse dies fine dies and down at the very bottom we have uh, metric taps and dies together because uh, I don't do a lot of metric work, so I don't need two drawers for that. And then this bottom one here, for the time being, is empty. More than likely, I'll probably uh, put some reamers in there. I don't have a whole lot of reamers, um, but I do have kind of standard size ones, like a uh, quarter inch, three eighths, half inch, and I have the undersizes of those. Um, so we'll kind of just organize them into that. So it worked out pretty good. Um, it is on casters. It, it does roll around. Uh, I more than likely will probably end up making it stationary somewhere, but... Uh, we'll keep it as is for the time being. Alright, so let's get on the bench and take a look at this deep burn tool. Okay, so um, what we're going to be taking a look at today is a uh, Cogsdale Burrowway deburring tool, which basically looks like this. This is the largest one that I have. I have some smaller ones here. Um, and this is the one that we're going to be using. 
I, I would use the big one. I just this takes a larger, a longer blade. I don't have the blade for this one, um, but we'll just kind of use that one to illustrate the general premise of this. So um, now these are an older version, which are kind of in two parts. Um, the new ones, I believe, are all self-contained. So this uh, pin and the spring that I'm going to show you will be part of the body itself. Um, so this has it, like a little uh, chucked, a uh, little shank here that you chuck up, and uh, that this sits in, and that has a spring on it uh, that pushes against this rod. Now, like I said, in the newer versions, um, I believe that whole thing is integral to the tool itself, where you just be able to chuck up the tool. So you can see we have this rod here in the cutters, which are high-speed steel, uh, kind of look like this. Now you can get them in pl uh, many different flavors. They make carbide ones of these, but um, that's basically what it looks like. And we have a cutting edge here and a cutting edge here. And you can see this little tab in the middle, or this little cutout, and then this little tab on the end. All right, that little tab in the middle grabs that pin with the cutter face and this cut this cutout here, and this little angled tab grabs the tip of this pin, which will allow that uh, the pressure of on this will allow that uh, whole tool to pivot up and down. So let's get the one that we're going to use, and we'll install the bit. So I'll take it, we'll hook it on that pin, and it'll flop right down in place and then we take the pin and put it in the back and make sure it grabs on that tab. Now you see that popped up. Now depending on how much pressure I put on this it pops up more or less. Now you put it into this holder which has a flat on it. We'll go ahead and we'll tighten that down. The spring's already in there, and on the bottom, there is a set screw. So you can see that is below the surface there. As I tighten this screw, it puts pressure on the spring, which pops that up. So you can actually um, adjust how much pressure is against this tool and how much pressure it gets on the workpiece. So now the premise behind this is um, basically production work. You have a lot of holes that you drilled, and you need to deburr the holes. Um, this will allow you to put this tool in in a spindle and it would allow you to go in if this is your hole here it'll go in like this deburr that side it'll spring shut and the top of this is flat and polished so it won't it won't um, gouge the bore and as you go in, it'll pop up on the other side, and you drag it back, and it'll deburr both sides at the same time. And you can adjust the amount of pressure on this tool to um, make the actual uh, deburred counterboard type deal, or countersink thing, um, more or less, depending on your application. So that's pretty much the premise behind it. They're more or less meant to, these are actually meant to spin. So they're meant to be put in a mill or a CNC machine, something like that, that would spin the tools. Not necessarily meant to be um, stationary in a lathe tailstock and go in and out. Though I'm sure you probably could use it um, like that also. So what we're going to do is we're going to use this in aluminum and we're going to go over to the drill press and uh, play with it. So I only I don't have very much tension on here right now. So we're going to try different tension settings and see what we get in um, our pot. And the size of this here, um, they're all different sizes. I think they go up to two inch. I think it's the largest one that they go. So um, this one here is 150,000. So we'll get a drill bit or just shy of. So we'll get a drill bit that's uh, close to that and uh, we'll drill a hole in some aluminum and we'll try, see how this guy works. Okay, we got the tool in the chuck here and um, I have it at a relatively modest spring pressure and you can kind of see the uh, the premise here is, uh, let's see if I can zoom in just a hair more, you can see the tool there so it's going to be spinning, it's going to hit the top, it's going to fold itself in, you're going to go through, 
it's going to be underneath and spring back out again and you're going to be able to come up and deburr the bottom of the hole too. Um, so I'm gonna, probably going to move the camera back just a hair so I can get a, a really nice close up shot of that. Okay, so we're going to use this, um, again, so you can get a shot of this here. Uh, that's kind of how it works. Now, um, there is a little bit of run out in this tool itself, and that is from the shank. The actual bore in the shank is really loose. Um, so maybe another project for another day will be making a, uh, a holder for one of these. But for at least demonstration purposes, you get how this works. So you just uh, run her in. And I'm going to do all the holes here. And you could probably go faster than this. I'm just going slow so you can see the uh, the tool working. And that's it. Actually, all these all these holes here are nice and deburred. So now um, I'm going to leave this hole as it is, and then I'm going to progressively uh, tension the spring, and we'll see the difference in the holes. And um, maybe I can get a light in behind this so you can see a little bit better. Okay, there's significantly more tension. Okay, guys, now I have pretty much the most tension I can have on it and I uh, still have it retract. So there you go. Both sides of the bird. Well, it actually works pretty good. And those are the other holes. So if you have a lot of pipes to do, you know, production environment. Definitely a nice tool to use, and like I said, maybe uh, one of our projects will make be making a new uh, new holder for this. Okay, next little um, demo here is going to be of this Enco dead center, but unlike a regular center, this front is on a on a cam, and uh, it would allow you to actually move this tip back and forth uh, up to. Um, twelve thousandths of an inch offset. So I mean, you could adjust it if you if your lathe was cutting a taper, you could adjust for that. You could also make a small, t uh, slight taper, um, if you needed to. So uh, we're going to be using this as uh, as an example of um, our lathe was cutting a taper for whatever reason, and we didn't want to adjust the tailstock, or for whatever reason we couldn't adjust the tailstock, we can adjust our center. Because I have it in the three jaw chuck, I'm not going to be offsetting it that much. So um, we'll actually use the, the uh, center lube that came with it. And we'll give her a little goop there, a little goop there, and we'll put her in place. Lock it down. 
Mark it down. Make sure that we're rotating nice so we're not binding. Okay, so right now what we're gonna do is just take a test cut. I'll move the camera over a little bit. We'll take a test cut for about six inches or so, and then we'll see what we are for a taper, and then we'll adjust this, and then see what kind of taper results from that. Okay, I got you a bird's eye view, and we're at zero on this here, and we're gonna take a cut to, um, we'll say about, right about there. Okay, so um, I changed my feed right in the middle. That's why it's a little bit, the finish is a little bit different on either side. All right, so now we're gonna measure this and see what we got. Seven, uh, 34 and a half. And, uh, 732 and a half, so we're 2,000 taper there. So we can actually move this, move this uh, center here, move this away from us, 2,000s. Put this back in, tighten her up, and see if that corrects our taper. Okay, so um, I just took a finishing cut here. So I'm going to see where we're at. It should be pretty close, if not right on. 642. Six forty-two and mm, four tenths. So we're four tenths off from here to here. So yeah, as you can see, we can adjust that back and forth. Um, so, eh, not too bad. What I'm going to do right now is I am actually going to um, put it to its full extent here, actually. I'm going to do its full extent this way. And so that way there, this side will be smaller than this side. And we're actually, I'm going to make a quick cut here and uh, we'll see what we get. to take that much off on this end. So we should have roughly a 12,000th difference from here to here. All right, I just had to find my mic. So now um, we should have a decent taper on here. And see what we are at this end here. Uh, 625, 26, 26, 27, and 7 tenths. So 
633 and 2 tenths. Which makes sense. All right, because this we're turning six inches. We we turned six inches, and we have a twelve thousandths offset on a one foot piece. So right in the middle, that makes sense. We have a six uh, roughly a, a six thousandths difference from here to here. Um, so that's actually pretty pretty accurate when you use it. So um, something like this, uh, a very shallow taper like this can be used as an arbor to um, mount, say, like a gear or something like that that you're working on. Um, you can shove it on there and that taper should uh, lock it nice and tight. Um, you can make so, like mandrels with just that slight taper. So not, not bad. Um, you know, so that's kind of how it's designed, how to work. Um, as you can see on a one foot piece here, you can't have that much of a taper, so it's not useful for making something like uh, a Morse taper or anything like that. Um, but if you need to make a really, really slight taper on something and you don't want to fuss around with the tailstock, you can definitely be used to use that. So that's pretty much it for uh, this video here. So I hope you guys liked it, and uh, we'll see you in the next video. And now I'm going to go outside and shovel. Yay.